Glass lines is a relatively new category. It was started in 2015, uh, I think, after um, Joel Sandberg uh, asked Phil Thomas, the head of Canmax, to to establish this category to specifically address uh, change related to, to gender issues. And um, in the subsequent years, it's, it's only been three years, it's been um, expanded somewhat to talk about all positive change against bias and discrimination. So uh, this year, for the first time, the organizers decided to make it a live judging session. So. What we had was uh, all the shortlisting was done uh, from home. It was done done online, and the finalists, the 27 shortlists, were told that they would have to come and present their cases in person at CAN uh, about a month before. So we um, published the shortlist early. We came here and we saw live presentations, 10 minutes each, with 10 minutes of Q&A from the jury. Uh, over two days, we saw the, all 27 uh, presentations, and then we had a day for deliberation: of which one, which ones deserved uh, metal, and which ultimately would be the Grand Prix. There was quite a lot about um, technology, women in technology. There was there was quite a lot uh, to do with normalising what uh, you know some irrational taboos and biases and prejudice. So it was really about sweeping away all, you know, as many irrational, um, you know, sort of biases that we have. And there are many, many clients and agencies that came together to tackle these issues. And what, actually, the interesting thing about this category is that it's, it's uh, subdivided into two. One is, one is uh, commercial brand work, the other is NGO work. And so um, only the commercial brand work is eligible to win the Grand Prix. And what we saw in, it, actually across both categories, was uh, in, among the best entries, was um, an incredible collaboration between clients and agencies. And in the very best cases, uh, the client and the agency worked together to overcome uh, resistance to change. Change is never easy, change involves backlash and resistance. And, and in many of the cases, uh, the brands had to factor in that they would actually get. Uh, haters and, and, and backlash to what they were doing, but that the rewards of doing this would be a lot greater, and, and so it proved to be. Ultimately, as I said, what, what, was, what exemplified the best of the category was an incredibly brave client and a very brilliant uh, creative idea and execution, which um, for 2018 came together in the Blood Normal campaign for uh, Libres in in, in Europe, and it was, a, it was a campaign that came out of London, came out of AMV Beauty of London. Um, but it, it, in their presentation, and the clients were actually in the room during the presentation, um, the, it became clear that the clients themselves were taking an enormous risk in doing this. And, and I think the quote was, um, I'll probably lose my job, but let's do it anyway. And, uh, and this is really about challenging the taboo and in a way, an advertising created artificiality of always showing a sort of blue liquid to represent, uh, to represent blood, to represent uh, period blood, menstrual blood. So, so, so it was always, this is always this kind of weird um, artifice around it. And what they decided to do was to challenge that and say, we shouldn't be ashamed or hiding or squeamish about about this because this is a totally normal part of life that half the world's population needs to uh, go through to actually for the survival of the entire race. So, so let's just grow up about it and, and uh, think about it normally. So the whole campaign uh, was a, a massively integrated case with, with film and digital and uh, point of sale and uh, you know, just, just every kind of touch point that was covered. It was a direct challenge to, to the prevailing norms. As you'd expect, a very diverse jury, very, um, and people who, who had various fields of expertise uh, and sensitivities. Um, so um, the majority of women, uh, three men, um, and yeah, so people from all over the world. Um, transgender person, you know, so, so you, you really had uh, people with, with knowledge 
of um, of various things about the world that um, that they could bring to it. It was an insight into the motivation behind the campaign, an insight into the passion behind the campaign, and I think in some cases, it, although it wouldn't change, you know, a piece of work, you know, it wouldn't make a bad piece of work good or anything, but it, but it would certainly uh, give an insight into the creation of that work and actually the desire, the genuine desire for it to create change. And the, the big learning that comes out of this is that um, promoting positive change in the world is a hugely important and, and uh, thing for society, but it's also a, a very motivating thing for the community and consumers in general. So it really is a, a win-win for brands if they can uh, promote relevant causes that, um, that align with their, with their own values and align with the values of, of the people that are trying to reach. And, and I think doing so uh, at scale with agencies and clients in partnership is, is the way to really create massive positive change.